look at uh, 1 Corinthians and chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, this is written to Christians, to believers. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant to uh, how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. So straight away we can see that the Lord Jesus Christ did not begin to exist when he was born of Mary. He's the eternal self-existent one. But you see, the Father sent the Son to be the Saviour of the world. Now, is he your Saviour? You need to make him yours personally. If you don't, you'll end up dying and going down to hell. And this is not what God wants. He's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But with many of them, God was not well pleased, for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent we should not lust after evil things. As they also lusted, neither be ye idolaters, as were some of them, as it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Neither let us commit fornication as some of them committed and fell in one day three and twenty thousand. Twenty-three thousand people fell in one day because of fornication. That neither let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed of serpents. Neither murmur ye, as some of them also murmured, and were destroyed of the destroyer. Now all these things happen unto them for in samples, in other words, examples, and are written, and they are written for, uh, for our admonition, upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer or permit you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men, judge ye what I say. The cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread. Remember, this is written to Christians, to believers. For we being many are one bread and one uh, body. For we are all members of that one bread. Behold, Israel after the flesh are not they which eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar? What shall I say, that the idol is anything, or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons, and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with demons. Ye cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. Ye cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. Do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? All things are lawful for me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but all things edify not. Let no man seek his own, but every man another's wealth. Whatsoever is sold in the shambles, that eat, asking no question for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If any of them that believe not bid you or invite you to a feast, and ye be disposed to go, whatsoever is set before you eat, asking no question for conscience sake. But if any man say unto you, this is offered in sacrifice unto idols, eat not for his sake that showed it, and for conscience sake, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. 
conscience, I say, not thine own, but of the other. For why is my liberty judged of another man's conscience? For if I, by grace, be a partaker, why am I evil spoken of for that which I give thanks? Whether therefore ye eat or drink, or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Give no, none offence neither to the Jews nor to the Gentiles, nor to the church of God. Even as I please all men in all things, not seeking mine own profit, but the profit of many, that they may be saved. This is, this is what really is my desire, that you would be saved. This is God's desire, actually. And God's desire is a lot stronger than mine, obviously, because God does not want any of us to perish. God does not want any of us to go down to hell. He wants us to be in heaven with himself for all of eternity. We cannot be there if we don't put our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's very simple. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This can be yours this morning. If you come in repentance toward God, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you're a sinner and then you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. This is what God wants for each and every one of us. He does not want us to perish. He does not want to have to judge us in that terrible place called hell and eventually the lake of fire brimstone with his weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth for all eternity. God does not want that for you, my friend. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your saviour. Now moving on to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Be ye followers of me. These are the words of Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, uh, to the Christians uh, meeting at a place, place called Corinth. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would not have you, uh, sorry, but I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. Every man pray, uh, praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. But every woman that prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered, dishonoreth her head. For well, that is even all one as if she were shaven. For a woman, for if the woman be not covered, let her also be shorn. But if it be a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought to man, uh, sorry, ought a woman to have power on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Judge in yourselves, is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. But if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom, neither the churches of God. Now in this, that I declare unto you, I praise you not, that ye come together not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when ye come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. For there must be also heresies among you, that they which are approved may be made manifest among you. 
When ye come together therefore into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper, for in eating every one take, uh, taketh before one his own supper, and one is hungry and another is drunken. Uh, what? Have ye not houses to eat and to drink in? Or despise ye the church of God and shame them that have not? What shall I say unto you? Shall I praise you in this? I praise you not. For I have received uh, of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and uh, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are hasted, chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, remember this is written to Christians, to believers, uh, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together uh, unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. I want to move on now to uh, 1 Corinthians and chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not chattering charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail, whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and uh, we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. And so we see that the certain, praise the Lord, thanks. Uh, we see that the certain um, gifts here that are not going to abide forever. Uh, they've ceased, they've stopped operating. Now, these sign gifts were actually given to prove the fact that this message, this gospel message, was of God, and that the Christ was of God. The Lord Jesus Christ was the chosen one of God. He's the God's anointed. And these, these sign gifts, as I said, were to point that fact out, to tell people clearly that this is the Christ, and this is the right message from the God of heaven that we need for our salvation. You see, we all need to be saved, and we all need the forgiveness for our sins. Uh, saved from the wrath of God, saved from our sins, and uh, to have peace with God. 
And that the only way we can have peace with God and, and uh, have forgiveness for our sins and a home in heaven for all eternity is through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's his finished work that makes all the difference, my friend. If we come uh, by faith to the Lord Jesus Christ, put our faith in him, come in repentance toward God, that is, a change of mind, and then we, uh, that is, agree with God that we're sinners, and then we believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, our soul will be saved. This is what God wants for each and every one of us. And so it says here, um, When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abide of faith, hope, and charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. Charity really is love in action. You see, when we say we love someone and we don't do anything about it physically, we don't actually go out of our way to help them in some way or something like that or show love in that physical way, well, our words may not be true. We might say we love someone, but unless we act on it, it's not really true. And we see uh, charity fully displayed in the person of Jesus Christ. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This is what God did to prove his love for you and for me. That he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him, that is on Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. The question is, have you believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? Is he your saviour, or will he have to be your judge? It's either one or the other, saviour or judge, heaven or hell, salvation or damnation. Your eternal destiny is all bound up in the person of Christ and what you do with him. Well, I hope you've understood the message, and if you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you, and thanks for listening. Remember, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians at chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory that which, uh, what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So we can fully trust what God says in his word. You know, the Bible says, let God be true, but every man a liar. So we need to understand that Christ died for our sins. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ does not have any sins, but he died for your sins and for mine. And Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. So we need to understand first up that we're guilty of sin before the Lord. And God wants to forgive you of all of your sins. And that's why I'm here this afternoon. So that you would receive forgiveness for your sins 
by putting your faith in Jesus Christ. You see, the Lord Jesus Christ will either be your saviour or he'll have to be your judge. You wonder what will it be for you? It all depends what you do with him. You can receive him or you can reject him. It's up to you. But if you reject him, let me remind you, you will finish up dying and going down the hill and that's not God's will. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Repentance being a change of mind. Simply come to God, agree with him that you're a sinner, and then believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. This can be yours this afternoon. You can get right with God, your soul can be saved. You can have forgiveness for your sins, a home in heaven for all of eternity, and peace with God. All through the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross, and your right response to that. As I said, you can just go past it, you know, and say, I don't care, it's all right. But if you do, just bear in mind that when we're born into this world, we're born as sinners. For all have sinned that come short of the glory of God. Being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Salvation is found in a person, my friend. It's not found in a man-made religion at all. You know, you can follow the religion of your uh, ancestors, you know, your mum and dad, grandma and grandpa, whatever, but it won't get you to heaven. Only Christ will get you to heaven. If you don't have Christ, you don't have anything. Man-made religion is absolutely vain, it's empty, it's useless. It's taking many thousands and millions of people down to hell. But God does not want that. God wants you to be in heaven. And this is why we've got to come to Christ to be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That can be yours this afternoon if you come. As I said, in repentance toward God, acknowledge your sinful condition before the Lord. Just admit the fact, yes, I realize that I'm a sinner. And then you put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. This is what God wants for each and every one of us that our soul would be saved. We'd be on our way to heaven through the finished work of Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. Yes, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and he was buried. But praise God, the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve, after that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once. He was seen of over 500 Christians in one hit, my friend, after he'd risen from among the dead. What an amazing testimony concerning the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He's not dead anymore, my friend, he's alive. The third day after he was crucified, he rose from the dead. Praise the Lord for the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said to his disciples that because I live, ye shall live also. I wonder, do you have that life, that spiritual and eternal life that can only come through faith in the Son of God, in the Lord Jesus Christ? Have you put your faith in Christ? Are you a child of God? The Bible says we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. It says here, after that he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain under this present, under this present, but some are fallen asleep. In other words, some have died and gone to heaven because they're believers, they're Christians. If you die, where will you be? Five seconds after you die, it's either going to be in heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ and your right response to him, you're receiving him as your saviour, or you'll be down in hell because you've rejected or neglected the Lord Jesus Christ who wants to be your saviour this afternoon. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles who, who that am not meet or worthy to be called, or fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. 
This man called Paul, his name was Saul before he was Saul of Tarsus. He was a persecutor of the church. He persecuted the children of God, the, uh, the uh, believers. And then he was gloriously saved, praise the Lord, for the uh, salvation of Paul. He later became an apostle of Jesus Christ. And he's the one who wrote these words, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And he was buried, and he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, so that your soul and mine could be saved. You see, we have a soul that needs to be saved. That soul leaves our body at the moment of death, my friend. Where will you be five seconds after you die? It'll either be in heaven through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, or it's going to be down in hell. What will it be for you? God does not want you to go down to hell. He wants you to be in heaven. But the only way you can get to heaven is through the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And he said, and last of all, he was seen of me also as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles that have not been or fit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And this grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I laboured more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was with me. Therefore, uh, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so ye believe. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we have testified of God that he raised up Christ, whom he raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is vain, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, we know that's Adam, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. That's through the Lord Jesus Christ. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own uh, order, Christ the first roots, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Uh, then cometh the end when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. For he must reign till he hath put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he hath put all things under his feet, but when he said, All things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued under him, then shall the Son also himself be subject under him that put all things under him that God may be all in all. Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead rise not at all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord, I die daily. If after the manner of men I have fought with beasts at Ephesus, what advantage should it me if the dead rise not? Let us eat and drink, for tomorrow we die. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Awake to righteousness and sin not. Again, this is written under the Christians, uh, meaning here at a place called Corinth. And uh, awake to righteousness, and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. 
I speak this to your shame. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? And with what body do they come? Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickened or made alive except it die. And that which thou sowest, thou sowest not that body that shall be, but bare grain, it may chance of wheat or of some other grain, but God giveth it a body as it, as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one uh, body, glory of the sun and another glory of the moon and another glory of the stars. For one star differeth from another star in glory. So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, was made a quickening spirit. In other words, a life-giving spirit. Howbeit, that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterward, that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. That's the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. And again, this is written to Christians, to believers. Uh, now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a tw the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruption shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we, therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. You see, what we need is spiritual and eternal life. And this life can only come through the Lord Jesus Christ and his wonderful once for all sacrifice upon the cross of Calvary. Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many and then to them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You see, the Christians are waiting for what we call the rapture. It's what we've been reading about here in uh, 1 Corinthians in chapter 15. The time when the Lord Jesus Christ comes down into the air to take us, that is, those who are saved, the believers, to be free with himself in heaven. What about you? Will you be left behind to go through the tribulation period upon this earth, the last three and a half years of the seven-year periods called the Great Tribulation? No need to be left behind in any of those seven years, my friend. But not only that, to be cast into the lake of fine brimstone, where there's weeping 
and wailing and gnashing of teeth. This is the second death. No need, my friend, no need to go down the hell of the lake of fire. You can be saved by the grace of God this afternoon if you put your faith in Jesus Christ. Come in repentance toward God, as I've said. Just change your mind. Agree with God that you are a sinner. And then place your faith in our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, that God promises you everlasting life. Through the precious shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, your sins can be totally blotted out, washed away in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. That's a land without blemish and without spot. What will you do then with Jesus, which is called the Christ? Will he be your saviour? Or will he have to be your judge? It's either heaven or hell. What will it be for you? It's determined by what you do with the Lord Jesus Christ. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Do it now before it's forever and eternally too late. If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you and thanks for listening.